In this video you will learn how to copy objects inside JavaScript and how to implement deep copy or deep clone method on your own. So the first question here that you want to ask me, why do we need a copy of our object? And typically we have for example an object A with B1. And you might say, ok, I just want to use A, this is why here I will write A C equals 2, this is totally fine. But at some point of time you want to create a new object without modifying your previous object A. And let's say here you want to create new A and a lot of people will just write equals A. In this case here when we will console log our A and new A and check in browser you can see that they are equal. Because actually this line does not create a new object with copying all fields from the old object. It is still referencing the same object. This is why it won't work, you will just change the same object. And the typical solution here that I can recommend is using object assign or spread. You can just write here an object which is a new object, here inside we want to spread A, which means we are just taking all properties from the A and we put it inside this object. And if we need to override something, for example C equals 2, then we can do it directly here. Now after this we can just console our A and new A and you will understand that they are different. Because in this case here we didn't do anything with A, we simply used all properties from the A inside new A. And this is the best possible variant when you want to create a new object based on the old object. And actually there is another approach, this is older approach that I am not recommending nowadays. And here we can just use new A and we can use object.assign and the idea is the same, here we have target and source. So first of all here we can create an empty object, then here we can paste A and then here we can overwrite everything with C2. And essentially this is the same code, we are taking here an empty object, we put all properties of the A inside this empty object and then we put all properties of this object which is C2 inside. And as you can see here it is working exactly the same, but it is not that beautiful and it is all the approach. And now we must talk about deep copy or deep clone inside JavaScript. What does it mean? We have a nested object. For example here we have a, b and for example in this case b is not a number but it is also an object and here we have for example c2. What we have now here we have a which is a nested object. And now here you might say ok I will just spread a and here I want to write d2. Let's check how it will look like. I am reloading the page and here we have our old object which is b with c2 and here we have b with c2 and here d. It looks like it is working. But now let's try to change a property inside this nested object b. Which means we must write new a dot b and here inside for example we want to create f and d3. And I am reloading the page and here what we have. We have here our first object b c2 f3 and here we have b c2 f3 and here is our d2. Which actually means we use spread and this is actually super confusing. Because here we still have a reference but between nested object. So actually this whole object was not copied, new A is really a new object, but this C2 object inside B is referenced. Which actually means we can't use spread and object assign when you have a nested object. It just won't work and it will be super difficult to debug. So we must find another approach and actually the easiest approach might sound a little bit hacky. Here inside new A I don't want to use a spread operator. What I want to write here is JSON parse and inside JSON stringify and I am passing here A. So what we are doing here? First of all we are converting this whole object in a string, this is JSON stringify. And then we just parse this string back in the object. What essentially it does, it takes all properties, doesn't matter what nesting we have and converts it in the string and then back to the new object. This is why here when I will reload the page we won't see this problem. Here we have b, c2 and here b, c and f. Which actually means this is completely new object and we don't have any reference between these two objects. And actually here you might ask, ok this sounds like an awesome idea, why we are not using this construction everywhere? The main problem is when you have a super nested object 
or you have not normal typical object or array, then this method can break. For example, if you have functions inside or you have DOM elements inside, then it won't work. This is why for simple constructions you can use JSON parse and JSON stringify, but it is much better to have a specific method which does deep copy. And the best possible variant that I can imagine is using a library. And this is why here inside index.html I put a script to Lodash library. And if you don't know what is Lodash, this is super popular library for data transformations. Essentially, you just have a hundred of different functions inside. And one of these functions is called clone deep. This is why here instead of JSON parse and JSON stringify, we can use our library. So here I will use underscore dot and this is our Lodash library and I'm writing here clone deep and I'm passing inside A. And this is a special function inside Lodash to just work with nested arrays or objects. Let's check this out. I'm reloading the page and we're getting exactly the same result. So our objects are not referenced. So this is really a deep copy. So if we are talking about some production project, I will highly recommend you to just take this function and you're good to go. But you must use it only when you have nested objects or arrays. It is much slower than a normal function to copy like with spread. This is why I can't recommend to put it in every single case. But obviously to understand how deep copy is working, we must build this function on our own. So what I want to do here is just build a function which will do a deep copy for arrays or objects. This is why let's try to do this now. Here on the top we want to create a function which is called clone and we're getting here some input. And what we can get here is anything. This is why we want to check if it is array or object. For this here we can write if our input equals null or our input or our type of input does not equal object, then we simply want to return this input. And actually this will be a copy already, because when we are just returning some primitives from the function, it will be a copy, it will be a new primitive. This is why we won't have any problem in using this function. And after this we want to write our logic, and actually what I want to do, first of all I want to write an initial output. So here we need a property where inside we will write our new array or our new object. And first of all here we can check with array dot is array if our input is array or an object. And if it is an array then here I want to write an empty array, in other case it is an object. And we are writing it here like this because now I want to write a reduce and we need the, an initial value. This is why here I want directly to return object keys and here will be our input. So the question is what object keys of input will give us back. So if we are using our object keys and we are throwing inside just a equals 1, then we are getting an array with a. This is our key of the object. But if inside object keys we are passing our array with 1 to 3 for example, then we are getting keys which are numbers from 0 to the length of this array. Which actually means this is an array of our keys and here I want to use a reduce function. And we are getting here our accumulator and every single key. Now inside we will write our magic and after this we want to provide here our initial output. This is where we will write all our results. And by default we have either empty object or empty array. And what we want to do now, we now want to write every single key inside. And for this we can just write accumulator key and accumulator is essentially our output which we are updating inside reduce and here we can just call our clone method with new value and it will be our input key which actually means input key is our value for example like here a1 and we are calling here clone which means we are calling it recursively if we will have here such object like a b c then for b key we will provide inside our clone this object c2 and we will do reduce again because this is an object and we are coming here but if it is a primitive then we simply go out and we are returning a primitive which actually means we have a reduce with recursion inside and it will go through the whole nested array or nested object and it will just update this accumulator and after this we want to return our new accumulator. Let's check if it's working. What we want to do now, we want to use on our A here our new function clone and we are passing inside our A. Let's check if it's working. 
I'm reloading the page and here it is working exactly like intended. Here we have our copy and we don't have any duplicates. So once again, how this function is working? We are throwing A inside clone and here we are checking type of. Obviously this A, this whole object is an object. This is why here we are creating initial output, it is an object and we are writing object keys. Inside our object keys we just have a single key B and we are looping through this key and what we are doing we are writing it inside our new object. And this is just object with this key B and we are calling clone with this object inside. Now we are coming again to clone, we are checking this object and we are doing the same reduce. Then for the value 2 we are coming to clone again and here we directly go to this return because this is 2 and this is a primitive. So this is how you can create a deep copy function inside plain JavaScript. And actually if you are interested to learn why comparison is bad inside JavaScript and how we can make it better with shallow comparison and deep comparison, make sure to check this video also.